Hello guys, this is Siddharth of SS Embedded World. Today I'm going to explain you how to interface a 4x4 matrix keyboard using Atmega32 microcontroller. In order to implement this project, you need to download the Proteus and AVR softwares. If you already have them, it's cool. You can do your simulation and program your controller. If not, don't be sad. We have done some videos on them. Just click on the card above on the screen and you will be redirected to them. Now, I will give you some introduction about 4x4 matrix keyboard and how to interface it with Atmega32 controller. In this project, we have used 16x2 LCD display to print the alphanumeric characters. If you are new to the 16x2 LCD display and do not know how to interface it with Atmega32 microcontroller, we have done a video on it. And we have left the link in the description. Please see it. Now, we will go through the document. Firstly, let's see what is meant by a 4x4 matrix keypad. A 4x4 matrix keypad is an input device which consists of a 16 push buttons arranged in a 4x4 square matrix form. The following is the internal circuit of the 4x4 matrix keypad. As you see, it consists of 4 rows and 4 columns. As it is a 4x4 matrix design, it comprises of 16 switches. We can see there are 8 outlets for the connecting module, among which 4 lines are rows and 4 lines are columns. The whole setup can be used to produce 16 alphanumeric characters. Now let's see the features of the 4x4 matrix keyboard. The maximum voltage across each button is 24 volts. The maximum current through each button can be 30 mA and the maximum operating temperature can be from 0 degrees to 50 degrees centigrade. Now let's see the working of the 4x4 matrix keypad. The working of the 4x4 matrix keypad can be explained in two ways. Any of the two methods can be used while implementing practically. They are making rows as inputs and columns as outputs or making columns as inputs and rows as outputs. There are two working modes but the process of both the working modes are the same. Considering the first case where the rows are made as inputs and columns are made as output. The circuit is explained as below. Here, the columns are made high for certain microseconds, one after another, by the microcontroller. Now, when the button is pressed, then it forms a closed circuit and it activates the function which is assigned to the particular button in the code and it sends the signal to the controller. Then, as per our program, it prints the alphanumeric character on the LCD. Here, as we see in the image, the button which is in the second column, third row, is pressed. Then the current will be flowing through this closer path and the row 3 will be activated and the function which is assigned to this particular button will be activated and the alphanumeric character will be printed on the LCD. Now, let's see about pull down resistors which we will be using in the simulation. Pull down resistors are those which connect the lines to the ground by default. They are connected to avoid floating pins. Generally, as per TTL logic, 5 volts to 2 volts is taken as logic 1 and 0 volts to 0.8 volts is taken as logic 0. Here, 0.9 volts to 1.9 volts is the undefined state where it is neither considered as a logic high or logic low. This undefined state are called as the floating pins. To avoid this, we either use pull up resistors or pull down resistors as per our application. In this, we have used the pull down resistors. Generally, the pull down resistors can be in the range of 1 kilo ohms to 100 kilo ohms. This is how the pull down resistors look. We have connected each pull down resistor to each column. Now, let's look at the problem statement. Interfacing a 4x4 matrix keypad with Atmega32 controller and to print the alphanumeric characters on the 16x2 LCD display. Now, let's look at the algorithm. Ports are to be initialized as inputs or outputs. Activate the LCD by passing the commands to the command function. Then create an infinite loop to activate the rows for a particular interval of time one after another. Now as per the button pressed, create if else conditions for each case and assign the alphanumeric character to be printed on the LCD and pass it to the data function. This is how the complete circuit of the Proteus simulation looks. As you look here, there is a Atmega32 microcontroller and a LCD connected to it. Here, all the columns are connected together and rows are connected together and given to the microcontroller. And the, here, the pull down resistors are connected to the each column lines and connected to the ground. 
this is some brief introduction about the 4x4 matrix keyboard. Now we are gonna implement this logic in AVR Studios and program the Atmega32 controller. Now I will explain you the code. Let's open the AVR Studio. Here is how the code looks. Here firstly we have added the hash include std input output dot h which is a common function to be added. Then we have added hash include avr slash input output dot h. Then we have added hash include util slash delay dot h in order to use the delay function. Then we have defined the clock frequency as 16 megahertz. Now here we have two functions named as command function and lcd data function. In order to know about these functions, please refer to our recent videos about the 16 by 2 LCD display. Now let's see how the main function looks. Here in the main function, initially we have defined the port A as input. Then we have defined the port B as output and port C and port D as also output by giving 0x ff. Then we have given some commands to the LCD display in order to activate the two lines then we have given the command in order to blink the cursor on the screen of the LCD display then we have given a command 0x01 in order to clear the screen and we have given the command 0x08 in order to put the cursor to the first line on the LCD display now here we have defined the infinite while loop which is the main part of this program here we have started calling the row1 function then we have provided a delay of 50 milliseconds. Then we have again called the row 2. Then provided the delay. Then we have called row 3 and provided the delay. Then again we have called the row 4. Then again we have given the delay of 50 milliseconds. Now we will see what are these row 1, row 2, row 3 and row 4 functions. As we see here, this is the row 1 function which we have written in the code. Here we have made the port B as 0x01 that means we have activated the row 1 then if we press any of the button then the pin a value will be changing if it is 0x01 then we will print the lcd data as s if the pin a value is 0x04 then we will be printing the lcd data as m if the pin a value is 0x08 then we will be printing the lcd data as b similarly in the row 2 function we have made the port b 0x02 that means we have made the pb1 to set as high. This is how we have written the if else conditions to each row. To build the code just press the build icon which is present on the toolbar. As you see it shows that it is built successful. We will debug the code and check our results. To debug the code first add the breakpoints. To add the breakpoints just click on the left side border of the workspace and the breakpoint will be added. You can remove the breakpoint in the similar way. Let's put a breakpoint on the row 2. See the breakpoint is added. Now let's remove it. See this is how the breakpoint can be added and can be removed. In this case we have already added the breakpoints. Now let's start debugging. Just click on the play button which is present on the toolbar or simply F5. Here's the play button. Just click on it. Here's how the debugging space looks. Now let's start debugging. You can view the results in the input output view. If the input output view is not docked to your workspace, please go to debug, then windows. Then you can see something called as input output view. Just press on it. Here as you see, we can see the port A, port B, port C and port D values. Now as you see, the DDRA value is 0x00. As you see here in the input output view, the DDR value is 0x00. Now let's press the play button again. And as you see, these statements should be executed, which is DDRB is equals to 0xff. Let's press the play button. And as you see here in the input output view, go to port B. Here you can see it is changed to 0xff. Now let's again press the play button. Then this statement DDRD is equals to 0xff should be executed. Now just press the play button. As you see the value in the input output view of DDRD has been changed to 0xff. Now the command 0x38 which activates the two lines has to be executed. Just press the play button 
and as you see it goes to the command function now the port c 0 x 0 2 has been executed just look at it port c is equals to 0 x 0 2 now port d is equals to command then what is the command which is going to be executed it is 0 x 3 8 let's look at it just press the play button and as you see go to port d you can see it has changed it to 0x38 just press the play button again again you can see it has come back to the command so again this command will be executed in the similar way let's look at it again just press the play button again it has been returned to the command function there again the port c value will be 0x02 then the port d value will be command just press the play button as you see the port d value has been changed to 0x0f and again press the play button and it has returned to the command again and you can see the process continues again now it has entered the infinite while loop now it has come to row 1 row 2 row 3 and row 4 now it will check each function if any button is pressed or not now initially we will not consider that any button are pressed so just click on the play button continuously now as you see it has been gone to the row 1 and then again came back to the while and it has pointed to the row 2 now it will go to row 2 and check if any buttons are pressed no no buttons are pressed now again it has come to row 3 and will check if any buttons are pressed see no buttons are pressed so again it has came to row 4 and will check if any buttons are pressed in the row 4 see no buttons are pressed now again it has come to the row 1 now we will consider that if a button is pressed in row 1 for example now let's give the input in row 1 that the value is 0x01 that the first button is pressed now just click on the play button as you see it has came to the first row and it is checking if the pin a is 0x01 now as you see it has gone inside the if condition that pin a is equals to 0x01 and it is pointing the lcd data and now we will go to the lcd data function and see if it is working now as you see the pointer has gone to the lcd data and the port c value is equals to 0x03 has been executed now let's look at it let's go to port c as you see here the value has been changed to 0x03 now the data is going to be printed now just click on the play button and as you see it has been executed and let's go to port d and as you see it has been changed to 0x53 are you wondering why it has been changed to 0x53 let's look at it now the alphanumeric character which we have passed to the lcd data is s now let's go to the binary chart once ascii letter s the hex value is 53 that means the value which has passed through it is the hex value of that particular ascii value now just press the play button and again it has came back to the command as there is a command which is going to be executed which is 0x06 and it will be executed as you look in the input output view and it has came back to row 2 now we have released the button so we have to remove that button and key back in the normal state will be 0x00 press on the play button again as you see here no button is pressed so it will be continuously going and checking if any button is pressed as you see it is going to row 2 function row 3 function and row 1 function etc in order to stop the debugging just press on the stop button which is present on the toolbar or just press Ctrl plus shift plus f5 see the debugging has been stopped this is how the debugging is done now we will take a look on the proteus simulation and see how we can interface the 4x4 matrix keyboard with 8 mega 32 microcontroller in order to create the proteus simulation you need a 8 mega 32 microcontroller a 16 by 2 lcd display and push buttons and a 1k resistors as a pull down resistors and a pot for adjusting the contrast of the lcd the connections are made as i explained before now to add the hex file 
just go to the avia studios again let's just build it again and as you see there are no errors now you can access the x file from the solution explorer if the solution explorer is not docked to your window then just go to the view then you will find something called as solution explorer just press on it and dock it to your workspace in the solution explorer you will find something called as output files now just expand it as you see here there is something called as dot hex file just double click on it here you will see the hex file now go to the top notch of the hex file then right click on it then you will find something called as copy full path and then press on it now you have copied the path of the hex file now just go to the proteus simulation and double click on the microcontroller here as you see there is something called as program file now just copy it there and click on okay this is how the complete hex file can be accessed from the avr studios and copied to the pretty simulation now just press on the play button here as you see the cursor has been pointing to the first line and the cursor is blinking now we will test each button if they are working or not now just click on s here the letter s has been printed on the 16 by 2 lcd display now let's test all the other buttons also next let's press e as you see the e also has been printed now let's print m the m is also has been printed now let's press b as you see the b is also printed on the lcd display now let's press d and w o r l star dot hash space now let's clear the display now just point to the second line of the display now point to the first line of the display now as you see here all the buttons are working now let's just print ss embedded world on the lcd display s s dot m now let's just go to the second line of the display just press second line and just print world here r l d as you see we have printed ss embedded world here there has been two os but it's fine it's ss embedded world this is how we can interface the 4 by 4 matrix keypad with atmega 32 microcontroller now in order to stop the simulation just press stop here the simulation code and documentation are available for you guys to obtain them please like the video and subscribe our channel then please comment below asking for the files or directly email us we will provide the email id in the description don't forget to like share and subscribe to ss embedded world and click on the bell icon for further updates thank you guys and we will be coming with more interesting videos like this